In the fall of 2016, 13 months after my completion of the Pacific Crest Trail, I drove through the desert for two days to reach one of the most beautiful places in Northern California, a blue jewel that is tucked in between pristine mountains, to begin a 165-mile hike along the Tahoe Rim Trail. The trail itself, which would end up taking me nine days to traverse in its entirety, led me through lush green forests, reflective blue lakes, clear rivers, and of course, spectacular views of Lake Tahoe itself that will forever be burned into my memory. This is my story of the Tahoe Rim Trail. I began my hike at Kingsbury Grade South, the approximate halfway point according to the official trail mileage markers, so that I would be able to resupply five days later without getting too far off trail. My first day provided beautiful views of the lowlands to the southwest, and served to highlight the dominance of these mountains that I'd be tucked within for the next nine days. Having started at 5 p.m., the sunset came early, but my legs felt fresh and in need of more miles after so long away from the trail. So after dinner, beside calm lake waters, I turned on a headlamp and continued into the night. Way off in the distance, the sunset gave me a preview of the days to come. I accidentally... Um, I accidentally took a wrong turn a little while back and realized it not very long later, like five minutes later, but decided that uh, I want to go and climb a mountain. <laughs> and that's where this trail is headed. So I'm up here on some peak that's 10,800 feet high, and the full moon just rose. A little, actually just under the full moon. <clears throat> but the view up here is absolutely beautiful. It is colder than all hell, and I am wearing running shorts right now. So I'm gonna show you the view real quick. I know my camera won't pick up most of it. Uh, and then I'm gonna shimmy my way back down this mountain um, <laughs> and make some warm dinner. There's the moon. My first full day on trail felt exactly like I remembered from the PCT. It was beautiful in a way that is hard to put into words. Trees scattered about in every direction and provided an immersion experience away from the city life that I was needing to escape. Being back on trail left me smiling from ear to ear. Although I brought headphones, I barely used them. A steady tread of footsteps was all I needed to bring peace of mind and forget about all the worries that I'd left back in Arizona. It was absolutely remarkable how quickly I felt back at home on trail. I watched as a fox hunted for prey and let time and trail carry me from point to point, barely noticing as the sun shifted overhead. Deep green forests were regularly punctuated by quiet open meadows where the trail stretched off into the distance. Although I'd been warned that water would be scarce, I had no trouble locating many streams along the way. Back on the PCT. For 30 miles or so, the Tahoe Rim Trail intersects the PCT on one of my favorite sections of the hike that you can see here highlighted in green. To be back on the Pacific Crest Trail after a year away was a feeling that I do not suspect that I will ever forget, and I genuinely could not have been more elated for the miles that were to come. Lush green forests opened to unforgettable views of the valleys below as the trail stretched to its furthest point away from Lake Tahoe, one of the very few occasions where the lake was not visible from the trail for an extended period of time. This is not to say that the trail was short of beauty, though. On the contrary, beauty and splendor presented themselves everywhere I looked, including and especially in the glowing red horizon towards the end of the day. I enjoyed a dinner of mashed potatoes beside peaceful waters, 
and caught a few late afternoon miles in the dimming light of the sun before setting my tent beside another one of the countless meadows that I'd come across along my journey. My third day started beside a meadow and traversed more deep forests and rock formations that were beginning to define this part of the trail before beginning into what would turn out to be the most scenic portion of the entire Tahoe Rim Trail, where lakes scattered themselves for miles, starting with Echo Lake and Lake Aloha, where I'd spent one of my most memorable evenings of my entire hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. Echo Lake is easily accessible by road and I cannot recommend it enough. And for those who are willing to venture into desolation wilderness, it is entirely worth the walk up into higher country, where trees become more scarce, and the lakes more beautiful than any waters that I've ever come across in all of my hiking experience. Lake Aloha in particular feels like a strange alien landscape, where it's almost impossible to keep from stopping to wonder at the splendor of blue waters and nearly barren mountains off in every direction. After Lake Aloha are even more lakes that are filled with giant trout that I hope to someday return and fish. Although I considered setting up my camp early beside some of those waters, something within me wanted to keep going so that I could reach the top of Dick's Pass, where I knew that the sunset would be worth fighting to reach. It was absolutely not a letdown, and although I'd see many sunsets along the trail, few rivaled what I found at the top of that mountain pass and I knew by the end of the day that the extra effort had been worth fighting for. What I failed to realize, however, was how much wind I'd have to fight that evening in order to make it to daybreak. Looking back on it now, however, I can go ahead and tell you that the wind was worthwhile. So this has been the last seven hours. I realized I forgot all my tent pegs. At the top of Dick's Pass. So I get to climb back up to the top of Dick's Pass. And back down to the bottom of Dick's Pass. But at least it stopped raining. Tent pegs got. Beautiful country all around. Still windy as all hell. My third night and fourth day weren't quite as easy as the days that had preceded. It rained throughout the night, and winds kept me wide awake from midnight onwards. And although I did have to backtrack to retrieve gear that I'd forgotten at camp, the day still turned out to be quite beautiful, just like every day that I spent alongside the Tahoe Rim Trail. Although some hikers had complained in the past few months about Desolation Wilderness being too crowded, I found myself pleasantly isolated amongst the trees, meadows, and streams that were scattered about in all directions, with only a few southbound Pacific Crest Trail through hikers crossing my path between sunrise and sunset. I awoke feeling torn on my fifth day of the Tahoe Rim Trail. Although I was excited for the miles ahead, and this was where my reunion with the PCT would be ending, as the TRT split off to gain its independence once again. The sky was clear when I awoke that morning, and winds had calmed as compared to the day prior. Before noon, however, clouds began to form on the horizon, and I knew that within short order, it was going to begin to snow. It's starting to snow just a little bit, but it's beginning. You can see off behind me. It's snowing now. 
Although snow and rain fell steadily for several hours, accumulation was quite minimal where I happened to be, and clouds cleared just before I reached Big Meadow, where aspen leaves were beginning to signify the coming of winter, as if the snow from earlier had not done so already. Soon thereafter I reached the Truckee River that leads into the one trail town of the TRT, Tahoe City, where I resupplied on groceries and rested at a hostel nearby. The next morning I started back on trail from the lowest point along the TRT and back up into the mountains where views of the lake become plentiful once again. I was beginning to love this country in a way that made me wonder if I would someday have to move here. Being up these in these mountains with those views only served to highlight how much this place has to offer, and I wondered how long someone could spend around here before reaching a point where they'd seen it all. The answer, I supposed, was a lifetime. I met a few day hikers along the way, and we made small talk about the trail, but mostly I wanted to be alone with nature. This, I found, was something that a late-season hike of the Tahoe Rim Trail offers in abundance. Perhaps the trail is more populated during earlier parts of the year, but from what I saw during my hike in September, the fall months on the TRT offered ideal isolation and time to contemplate whatever it was that brought me out here in the first place. Late in the day, I took a detour up to what was supposed to be one of the most breathtaking views of the lake, and after sitting up there for a meal and watching as the sun lowered on the horizon, I can tell you firsthand that the extra mile detour was entirely worth every bit of effort and time that I sacrificed for that viewpoint. I may even go so far as to say that the entire hike up to that point, and all the work that it took to walk for a hundred miles, was worth sitting up on that rock for sunset. It reminded me why I had left Arizona and driven so far to come here in the first place. Although I love hiking Arizona, especially during this part of the year, what I found along the TRT was completely different and made me want to stay forever, or at least until the coming of winter. I started to feel torn on the morning of my seventh day. It occurred to me that the trail was beyond halfway over now, and after sipping on coffee and a splash of whiskey that morning, I couldn't ignore that, like all things, this trail would someday have to come to an end. My hike of the Pacific Crest Trail felt like it was a battle with time, and a test of my ability to withstand day after day after day after day. But that wasn't how Tahoe was feeling to me. Tahoe was like a warm bath that I never wanted to end. It was the complete opposite of the PCT in that regard. Even after the wind, rain, and snow that I'd encountered before reaching Tahoe City, I felt alive on trail again. I felt like I had found my place and that this was heaven. But now that I was more than halfway around the lake from where I had started at Kingsbury Grade, I had to confront the sad truth that the beauty of my first hike around the Tahoe Rim Trail would eventually come to an end. And with every step, that end was coming closer. But that reality served to only further highlight the majesty of this place that I had been immersed within for the preceding seven days. Every turn of the trail brought me even deeper joy. The trees looked greener, the waters bluer, and the turning fall leaves gave me a glimpse into my favorite part of this season. People had told me that this would be a late season to hike the TRT, but I couldn't have been happier. Temperatures were ideal, and the trail was almost barren compared with more popular times of the year. Should I ever return to thru-hike around Lake Tahoe again, I can say with certainty that it will most certainly be during the fall season. As the sun set that night, I started to wonder how long it would be before I would return to these trails, and for a moment I even considered continuing on after reaching the end of the trail to just keep walking around and around the lake until I couldn't afford my resupplies anymore. My last full day on the Tahoe Rim Trail started near a dirt road, and in the morning I met a couple of day hikers. They remarked how amazing it was that I was walking all the way around the TRT, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. This part of the trail was especially wonderful as it offered regular views of the lake's spread down below as the trail crested over some of its higher points. The snow that had blanketed the rim's mountaintops three days before was almost completely melted off by now, but soon it would return, and from time to time the chill of a breeze would remind me that winter was not far away, and that the countless ski lifts that were scattered about along the rim would bring a new life to Lake Tahoe until late spring, when the temperatures would warm and hikers would again start their steady step, step, step along the miles of the rim trail, searching for beauty, or searching for themselves, 
or searching for some unknowable thing, as I seemed to be doing along the miles of that trail. My last day of the Tahoe Rim Trail was a mere three miles, and in a flash it was over. Before I was even fully awake, I came to my final mile, and in a blink, that came to an end. Pretty sure this is the end up here. About a hundred yards. I'm gonna take a side trail back to the car. All good things gotta end, I guess. But I wouldn't mind another couple hundred miles of this. No more TRT.